We live in an era of unprecedented change. The internet revolution has forever altered how we shop, how we date, how we work, basically how we live. For entrepreneurs, it's been a veritable cyber gold rush. In fact, the number of internet-powered home-based businesses has nearly doubled in the last 20 years. Opportunity abounds, but the new economy has also spawned a new breed of criminal looking to make a quick buck at your expense. This is Scam Report. Tonight, we'll separate fact from fiction in the world of work-at-home programs with the help of a private investigator with years of experience uncovering illegal get-rich-quick schemes. Work-at-home scams have become more popular and victims have become more plentiful. We'll meet an expert in the field of home-based businesses who successfully harnessed the power of the internet to change his future. For every legitimate work-at-home opportunity, there's probably a hundred scams as well as a victim of a common scam. I thought everything was okay. And then all of a sudden they disappear. It just devastates you. And it happens to a lot of people every day. It was really tough. I could have been homeless. And we'll also come face to face with con artists who've made it their business to feed without remorse on the dreams of the underinformed, those who are looking for the road to prosperity on the path of least resistance. I would pretend to be homeless. I would go into dumpsters of apartments looking for cans, but I was really looking for people's identity information. When you have a rent payment, you have kids, money has to come in somewhere. The next 30 minutes may help set you on the road to a brighter financial future while avoiding common pitfalls. Stay tuned. At this very moment, thousands of Americans are making steady supplemental or even primary income with their computers. A few even strike it rich, but many others strike out. I am 27 years old. I live in San Diego, California. I'm an artist of all types, even though I already have multiple part-time jobs. I was really desperate for funds because I could not make ends meet. Um, I don't have any financial help from family or anything like that, so I have to pay my bills and eat. So I found this work from home company and they essentially explained to me that they have US dollars that they wanted to convert to Bitcoin. And all I would have to do is take their money from their account and pretty much just transfer it to Bitcoin. So I did the footwork, or so I thought, and I also signed a contract with them to be a 1099 employee myself. For several months, I would pull money from their accounts into mine and then use those funds to go buy Bitcoin. I'm pulling thousands of dollars. Everything was going through for the most part. Then all of a sudden, actually about two months ago, each of the transactions all of a sudden came up as unauthorized, leaving me with negative $20,000 in my PayPal account. When the initial transfer of their money came back as unauthorized, I contacted this company and explained to them the issue, and then all of a sudden they disappear. Absolutely no answer. So I immediately started calling lawyers. They all denied me. That made me feel so hopeless. I wasn't able to access payments that were from my clients that I worked for because they were sending it to my PayPal, using my income to pay off something that was stolen from me. It's disheartening and it, it kind of makes me just extremely wary of contacting people online, even though I desperately need income. I'm just, you know, trying to support myself. So what are some of the more common con games you might encounter when you start the search for your ideal work-at-home opportunity? We went to E.J. Hilbert to get an experienced professional point of view. One of the most common work-at-home scams is the reshipper. 
a individual or a group will claim that they are an international company or a uh, telemarketing firm and they need somebody to serve as their shipping group. So they will send you products, which you will in turn then go and forward on to another location. The problem is that those products are our stolen products and when law enforcement comes knocking, they come knocking on your door. They come looking to you. Matt, how did you get involved with this in the first place? And my job was to receive a package that was shipped to a customer, take it out of the box, make sure the contents were correct, take pictures, and then ship it to the person it was going to. What did you think you were doing? I thought I was actually doing that. I thought I was doing quality control for big companies and just making sure they package their items right, send them right to customers. I thought I was doing something legit. And in reality, what were you doing? I was getting shipped stolen items from stolen credit cards and shipping them to other people. So you became the middleman in a much larger criminal enterprise. Exactly. One of the other most common is the accounts payable or the accounts receivable department for a company. Similar to the scam in which individuals are receiving products, they are receiving checks. And the job here is that you will receive a check from a particular group and you will be asked to cash that check. And then you'll keep a small percentage of it, usually 10% of the total, then pass the rest of the money on to another bank account. Your check goes in and you put it into a bank account. It usually takes two to three days to cash. But by that time, you've already wire transferred the money to the next individual. Therefore, when the check does clear, you're out the money and you're held responsible for it. What I was looking for is um, sort of like, a, not, nothing too far from what I was doing, um, doing accounting work. Just this week, I had two opportunities that had all of the elements of being legit until they actually said one thing. Uh, first, you have to purchase blank checks for us. Payroll checks, that, that's just, it, it just really overwhelmed me with fear. The thoughts that came into my mind is, how many people actually fall into this and what it does to them, what it would do to me. Those are just a few of the ways you can be separated from your money by hucksters with big promises. By the time you realize what's happening, it's usually too late. So who would use such blatant deception to pad their own bank accounts? Find out more when Scam Report continues. I thought if it's this easy, if these people are doing it to me and all these other people, why can't I do it to someone? Nothing happens to them, what's gonna happen to me? It's not true though. We've all heard the expression, if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Yet many still fail to heed this sound advice, and that's just what these people are counting on. You got into this to do something legitimate. Correct. And it turned out to be? Illegitimate. A scam. Completely. But it launched you on a path. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. What happened after that? I started doing my own scamming. How much money did you make doing this? $20,000, $30,000 in a quick amount of time. How quick? A couple months. If you could do this and get away with it for the amount of time you did and make the amount of money you did, what does that say about how common this crime is? I'm sure it's very, very common. And it's almost like the, the stores, the credit cards want it to happen because they make it so easy at times. They make it so easy. You know, there's certain accounts that they put their whole number on there, all the information you need. It's, it's like they want it to happen. It's easy to get away with this crime. Yes. And the only reason you got caught is because somebody- Someone didn't like me and told them what I was doing, told the police what I was doing. Had you not been ratted out, would you still be doing this today? Probably. Making big money. Probably. Largely undetected. Yeah, completely. They don't care. They'd rather bust the shoplifter with 20 bucks and tools in his pocket. Everyone makes money off it. But somebody pays. It's true. Did you know he was involved in this sort of activity? <clears throat> well, yeah. Did I agree with it? No, absolutely not. Um, we both were raised better than that. But when you have a rent payment, you have kids, money has to come in somewhere. And I guess that's the way I justified it. I didn't agree with it, but I did go along with it. You two were desperate. Yes. Yeah. Where you saw an opportunity. You took it. Correct. And your regrets? Yeah. Absolutely. Completely. 
Now it's almost impossible to find a legit job. No one wants to hire someone with a felony identity theft. We got evicted from our house. We pretty much lost everything. We're starting from scratch. The internet is full of crooks. It's full of people that are trying to get over. And there, we have the technology nowadays that it's very easy and it's very easy to write a script and sell it. And you got sold. And I got sold. And you sold it. And out. I sold. <laughs> you were essentially in the middle of, of a, a scam. Of a scam. So it you could were have, perpetrating this scam. It could have fallen back on me very heavily. You were helping in this scam. Yes, I was helping to scam people while getting scammed. You were a part of the conspiracy while you were also being victimized. Right. So you were basically helping to send out checks that were counterfeit, bogus, bad checks. Correct. How does it feel? For one, uh, guilty. <laughs> um, I feel shame. I felt like a fool. It, it, wasn't, it, it, it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it. I mean, I could be in jail right now just simply for being tied up in that. The message is clear. Not doing your research is a shortcut to getting ripped off. It's human nature to give others the benefit of the doubt, but some people specialize in taking your trust and turning it against you. Because of the nature of the internet, and because you can be from anywhere in the world communicating with anyone at any time, it is a very, very dangerous place to be looking for a job, particularly something like a work from home type of approach. There are legitimate jobs. There are absolutely legitimate jobs of working from home. But if you are going to go down that route, if you are interested in a work from home type of approach, there are a lot of things you have to watch out for. First off, anytime they ask for a starter kit, where you have to buy a starter kit of a particular set of products. Anytime where they ask you to become certified in a particular field that only they offer, by the way. When you do not talk to a real person, when they use email accounts that do not come from actual companies, also pay attention to what they're offering you. Pay attention to the amount of money that's being put into play. If they're offering you 10% of whatever you bring in, that should be a huge red flag. Sometime in the relatively recent future, we started believing everything that was on the internet. That's not the case. Now, there are good, safe places, don't get me wrong. There are absolutely places and sites that are designed specifically to try to educate you and help you. The big internet uh, search engines for jobs, like Indeed or, or Monster or even Google Jobs or so on, actually have sections that explain to you how not to become a victim. One site you might want to check out while you're doing your research is scamreport.com. They provide the information, unbiased, true approach to this. Their job is to identify when the scams are in play. So as you do your research, as you check out the various different sites, check out scamreport.com. Everybody wants to be able to work at home, either to right. make money to support themselves and their family, pay their rent, pay their mortgage, or to augment what job they already have. What do you tell folks about this experience, and what do you say to people who may want to do business like this uh, to protect them? A lot of um, scammers will say that they're out of town, you know, or they're traveling overseas. When you can't talk to the manager that hired you and you're talking to them on a platform or an app, it's something's a little fishy. You just gotta be careful. Matt, a lot of this just doesn't happen without the internet. Can't trust everything on the internet. Um, I thought I was a very, I guess, what non-naive, very knowledgeable person, and I got scammed very easily because of a good website and a couple of responsive emails. So no matter how good it looks, it's not always true on the internet. What do you tell folks to protect them? Be careful. Um, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is, mm. especially on the internet. Mm. I guess the rule is, if you don't know them in person, you don't know them on the internet. It's true. A lot of folks preying on desperation. Exactly. Absolutely. And the internet makes it easy. Right. Too easy. 
These cyber grifters and others like them lurk in every dark corner of the web. The good news is, with a little healthy skepticism, they're easy to avoid. If you learn how to spot the warning signs of a scam. You have to do your research, no matter what. I personally believe it starts with knowing who you're working for. I had a chance to speak with work at home expert John Cristani. Starting from scratch, he used the internet to build a hugely successful business. For Cristani, the key word is passion. A love of what you're doing can be like an engine that powers your home based business. The internet is a place where many people make a lot of money. Is it really just a matter of discipline? I believe so. You have to protect your focus on that business and realize that this is what you do now. And if you approach your business, your internet business, your work at home business like that, over time, I believe anybody can become successful. But you have to be passionate about it. You have to, and, and if you don't know what you're passionate about, you have to figure it out. Experiment with life. That's why people go to college, to find out what they're interested in. And I think it's the same thing with starting your own business is you have to find out what you're passionate about, what you can, what, what, what you're excited to talk about. I believe everybody has something they are excited to talk about. It might be crocheting, it might be gardening, but not everybody understands the concepts of marketing or has the discipline to go on every week or every day and be in front of their audience, even when you don't feel like it. That's discipline. Owning a successful work at home business has brought stability and peace of mind to thousands of Americans. Of course, any rewarding endeavor involves a certain level of risk. For every single successful way to make money as an entrepreneur on the internet, there are a hundred ways to get ripped off. 100%, 100%. There are more scams out there on the internet than there are legitimate opportunities by far. And um, it takes a long time, and I think that's why it took me so long. I'd always told myself I was gonna be an entrepreneur. I was, I was trying to make money on the internet for years. It, I mean, I, I spent four years, I didn't make a dime, and I was just trying and trying and trying. I didn't make anything. Just because it's marketed as, as free and easy, and it can make, you know, a ton of money, don't just fall for any shiny object that's thrown your way. It's more difficult to make an actual legitimate income online. Why is it so easy to be taken? People want so bad that dream of being able to work from home and make money. It's the ultimate dream, I think, of everybody. With the right mindset, I believe everyone can succeed, but the caveat here is, to be able to work for yourself, you need to be self-motivated. And I believe one of the big problems that has occurred in our society is that most people are trained to be employees. So they're not trained to be self-motivated. You're trained to be managed. And there's a very different basic mindset that happens when you have to work for yourself. You have to learn for yourself. You have to do the work, you can't just work at home and be lazy and be unprincipled. Hard work is important, but by itself, it's no guarantee of success. It also takes knowledge, experience, and expert advice from trusted sources. What do you tell people based upon your experience, your success, your failures along the way? What do you say to folks who are out there slugging it out every day, trying to make a living, being an entrepreneur online. I believe the most important thing to protect when you're doing an internet business is actually your own mindset. Because we are inundated with opportunities every day. We are inundated with products to buy every day. We are inundated with ideas. You should do this, you can do this, you want this. I think the most important thing is when you have a business at home, you have to do your research, no matter what, whenever you're doing an income opportunity. I personally believe it starts with knowing who you're working for. If you just trace it back, is there a person that I can identify that is behind this company? That is the easiest thing you can do 
at first. So do your research. If you're looking to actually replace your income that requires you to drive to work each day, you should spend a couple minutes looking up the company, looking up the founders, looking up who you're going to be working for. I mean, this could be your opportunity to work from home. Why wouldn't you do a little bit of research? I tell people, find a mentor. You know, find somebody that you can actually rely on and trust and build a long-term relationship with, a teacher per se, if you will, to help guide you on that path to make money. A lot of the people that I see getting scammed and some of the ways I was scammed were from nameless, faceless organizations that had no actual real individual behind the organization, but there were massive promises of easy money. And I fell for some of them. It's ubiquitous. It's, it's, it's completely ubiquitous. Ambiguous. Completely. And anonymous. 100%. If you focus and are dedicated, you can succeed. I believe if you give yourself the right resources, if you find a mentor, and with hard work and dedication, you can greatly increase your chances of success. And that's what I've done personally. And it took me a while. But by doing all of those things, by finding a mentor, by doing my research, by working hard, I was able to reach a point where I would consider myself successful. I've been able to reach a point where I can, I can work at any time I want. I don't have to wake up to an alarm bell anymore. I work from home. I can spend time whenever I want with my children. I can travel the world with my family. And it's not a vacation, it's just our life. So these are the things that having an internet business has allowed me to create for myself in my life. And it's been absolutely amazing. And was the, all the hard work worth it? If you were to ask me that, I would say 100%, yes. Some scams are glaringly obvious, but the worst ones are getting more sophisticated all the time. It's harder and harder to recognize the bad guys. I was looking for a work from home job because I was a student at the time and I had a full class schedule and couldn't work a full time job but needed to pay rent. I found a job doing real estate wholesaling is what they told me the job was going to be. And basically my job was I needed to find investors and I needed to find people selling their homes. And it was my job to find both of them and kind of connect them together. It was very legit through the whole thing. I worked for that company for about a month and a half and there were red flags to be sure, um, but my direct supervisor, I talked to her face to face. I called her on the phone. I, I was on video chat with her, the CEO. I saw him on video chats as well, and it was all very legit, and I realized it was a scam when there was no money. We didn't get paid. As these red flags started to rise and I started to question more and more, I started to ask other employees. I asked them, you know, how long, how long have you been here and have you gotten a paycheck yet? Everyone that I talked to said that they had been hired within a week of the time that I was hired. And because the pay structure was monthly, no one had gotten a paycheck yet. I was really excited. I told my parents about this job, and my father, while he is very supportive, he's also very realistic, and he did not want me to move here. And so his prediction was I wouldn't last four months. When the time came and I didn't get paid, it was two days before rent was due. And the humiliating part is I had to call my father And I had to tell him that I needed a thousand dollars right then and there. Otherwise, I would have been kicked out. Living in California, going to school, I 
didn't work basically for a month and a half. And in California, you can't, you can't do that. So yeah, it was tough. It was really tough. Um, I could have been homeless. If you are looking for a work from home job, I would highly, highly recommend to find someone to help you, uh, find a mentor. It's, it's not something that you can do on your own. If something doesn't feel right, listen to your gut. Don't be afraid to ask questions. A legitimate business will have answers that make sense. You also need what's commonly known as a BS detector. Be very skeptical of anything you read on the internet, including comments and reviews. When new technology comes into play, we design it so that it will make our lives better. We find new ways to try to advance what we're doing. It takes a very short order for somebody else to figure out how to abuse that system. In a recent interview, I was asked, how did I keep pace with the criminals? And the truth was, the criminals and I were working side by side, not together. They were trying to figure out a way to abuse the system, and I was trying to figure out that same way, and then how to protect the system. The criminals are winning. The system is being abused. It's how 99% of stolen credit cards, stolen information, personal information about you, your financials, your health care, the companies you work for, all of that, they monetize that. They make money through the internet, through selling you stuff, through luring you in. Phishing schemes and botnets and malware and ransomware are all directly a portion of the abuse of the internet and the abuse of the systems that are put there. You need to remember this and go back to this. Just because it's on the internet doesn't make it true. Pure and simple. As always, your best defense is common sense. For Scam Report, I'm Chris Hansen.